Hello and welcome to today's English lesson. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera? Hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hand on our laps and close our eyes. When you're ready, guys, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Excellent. And next, we'll do our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And for this stretch sequence, we'll begin by doing five stretches to our right. Two. Three. Four. Five. Excellent, guys. And then five to our left. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Excellent. And then we'll do some rotations. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Right. Excellent, guys. Now let's take our right hands and find our left foot. And now left hand, right foot. And then right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. And let's have a shake out, guys. Shake it out. Shake it out. Very good. And to finish, we will do five claps. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. Now, in our previous English lesson, we learned about some phrases that we use when we must do something. If I tell you you must do something, can anybody remember the phrases that I might use? There were two of them that we use in the present tense, beginning with H. Has to is one, yes, we can use the phrase has to. So let's write that phrase on the board. H-A-S-T-O, has to. 
Now we can use the phrase has to with some subjects. But with other subjects, we don't say has to, we have to give a second phrase. Have to, have to yes. We've got has to and, and then we got have to. H A V E T O. Has to, has to. And have to. And have to. Now, what we did in the last lesson, we learned about the different subjects I, you, we, they, he, she, it. Now, what we learned to do is we learned how to use these phrases with the correct subject pronouns in the present tense. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if our students can remember which subject pronouns to use with each phrase. I'm going to give my students a pen and then give them a subject pronoun. And I want them to write the correct pronoun in relation to the correct phrase, has to or have to. So let's get ready, guys. Let's see who can go first. I think we'll begin with Pak Bung. And let's see, we'll give Pak Bung the subject pronoun, it. So guys, if we have the subject it, do we say it have to? It has to. It has to. So Pak Bung, can you reach up top and can you write it with the correct phrase? I, I T. T. Excellent. So we can say it has to, has to, and then the rest of the sentence, such as drink water, do homework, or anything that we must do. But the important factor we're concentrating on now is the correct subject pronoun with the correct phrase. And Pak Boon, that was excellent. High five, big round of applause for Pak Boon, guys. <laughs> Let's see, next subject pronoun, who can we pick? Who can we pick? I know, we'll go with Net. So Net, come and join me at the front. Now let's see if Net can remember. Net, if I give you the subject pronoun I, what will we use I with? Has to have or to. have to, yes. We say I have to, yes. It has to, I have to. Excellent, Net. That was very good. High five and a big round of applause for Net, guys. <laughs> so we've got seven subject pronouns in total and we've got two on the board. Let's do the next ones now. So let's see who can go next. I think Down can go next. So Down, come and join me at the front of class. And let's see, I think we'll give Down the subject pronoun, they. So what will, will they say they has to? Have to? They have to, excellent Down. So can you write they with the correct phrase? T, H, E, why? Excellent down. So we can say, they, they have, to. have to. Same as I, we use they have to. Down, that was excellent. High five and a big round of applause for down, guys. <laughs> so now next subject pronoun. And next student, we will give the pen to Lak Gao. And I will ask Lao, Lak Gao to come forward. And the subject pronoun, she. Which phrase will we use with she, Lak Gao? Has to. She has to, correct. S, H, E. So we can say, she, she has, to. has to. It, it. Has, to. has to. But then with other subject pronouns, I, have to. have to. They, they. Have, to. have to. Lakau, that was excellent. High five and a big round of applause for Lakau, guys. <laughs> so 
Okay, so next student with the next subject pronoun. We'll give the pen to Nadia. Nadia, come and join me at the front, please. And Nadia, I would like you to write the subject pronoun, you. Where will you go? You has to? Have to. You have to. So Nadia, you can write it there. Excellent. You see, if we're talking about you, we can't say you has to. That's not correct. We have to say you have to. And then the thing that you must do. So Nadia, one more time. You have to. Excellent. High five. Big round of applause for Nadia. So we've got a few more subject pronouns left. Now the pen is with Pro. So Pro, come and join me at the front, please. Let me see. How about he? What if we have to use the pronoun he? He, exactly. Same as she, we use he. So Pro, can you write he high up top? H. E. Okay. And we must say... He has to. It has to. She has to. But then, you have to. I have to. They have to. Pro, that was excellent. High five, big round of applause. And there's one more subject pronoun left, one that we haven't done yet. Can anybody guess which one it is? We. we. Okay, so who can do we? Let's see. Who can we choose for we? I know, Pat can do we. Pat, can you come and join me at the front, please? <laughs> okay, so the subject pronoun we. Which phrase do we use the subject pronoun? We have to. Excellent, Pat. So can you write we? W. E. Excellent. We have to. Excellent. So we've got all our subject pronouns now with the correct phrases. She has to. It has to. He has to. And then, if we talk about you have to, you have to. I, have to. I have to, we have to, we have to. They, have to. they have to. And then each time, we will continue the sentence with the things that we must do. But this has demonstrated how to use the correct phrases with the correct subject pronoun in the present tense. So well done, Pat. That was brilliant. High five and a big round of applause for Pat, guys. <laughs> but like I said earlier, these two phrases we use when we're talking about things we must do now. Present tense. P-R-E-S-E-N-T. Present tense. But what tense do we use about things that we've already done? Past tense. P A S T. Now, can anybody remember the phrase that we use for the past tense? In the past tense, we don't say has to, we don't say have to. Can anybody remember? Has had to. Yes, had to. H-A-D-T-O. Now the good news, when we talk about what we must do in the past tense, there's only one phrase, have to. In the past tense, we can use had to with all subjects. So we can say, she had to. She has to. Not has to, she had to. 
Notice the final letter. The pronunciation is very important to sound correct. She had to. It had to. He had to. You had to. I had to. We had to. They had to. Excellent, guys. You see, very important, because between has and had, only one letter difference. But it's the final letter that makes the sound correct. So well done, guys. That was very well done and very well remembered. And what we're going to do in today's lesson, we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about the types of phrases we can use if we want to get somewhere. Does anybody know what types of phrases we use? If somebody asks you where somebody is, what type of phrases will you use? If I ask you to turn, what ways might we turn? Turn, turn left, turn right, go, go straight, turn around. And does anybody know what type of phrases these are? Beginning with D. Giving directions. Yes, in today's English lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we can get to various places on a map. And the important vocabulary we need is the directions. If you're in the city centre and somebody asks you, where is the post office? You need to tell them. Well, you need to use different types of vocabulary based on where that place is. And that's what we're going to do now. So we have a PowerPoint presentation for our students to observe and listen to about giving directions. So let's all turn to look at the TV screen, please, guys. Giving, giving. Directions. directions. Yes. Directions, as we've already discussed, is the types of vocabulary we'll use to tell people where certain places are. But if we want to know where somebody is ourselves, or some place is, there are a few questions we need to practice. The first one, how do I get to the... And then the name of the place. For example, if you want to find out where the post office is, we would say, how do I get to the post office? Or if we want to know where the cinema is, how do I get to the cinema? Yes. This is the question we use when we ask somebody where a place is. And if we want to know another type of place where we don't have to go far, where is the nearest coffee shop? Yes, nearest means closest to us. If we don't want to walk a long way, we ask for the nearest. So if we're in the city centre and there are lots of coffee shops, but we want to know the one closest to us, where is the nearest coffee shop? Okay, now who can give me another example of a place in the city centre? We've had post office, coffee shop, any other places? Hospital, okay. Well done, Pak Boom. We sometimes have an emergency where we need to get to hospital and we don't want to travel a long way. So we could say, where is the nearest hospital? Yes, we need to know the vocabulary we can use. So we have turn left. Yes. You can see the sign here that is telling us to turn left. And then the opposite of left, we have to turn right. 
These are very important dialogues for directions. But if we don't need to turn, we can say, go straight. Turn left. Turn right. Go straight. But how about if we're going the wrong way? What do we need to do if we're going the wrong way? We need to turn around. You can see the direction here. If we're going this way, oh, it's the wrong way. What do we need to do? Turn around. And then U turn. We say U turn if we're in a vehicle. For example, if we're in a car, we will do a U turn. But if we're on foot, turn around. And sometimes when we want to find out where we're going, we need to. Excellent. Read a map. Yes, a map will tell us where we need to go. And you can see this person here is having a look to read the map. And in the city centre, you will see these objects. Does anybody know what these are? Traffic lights. Yes, these are very important to tell us when we can cross or when we can go. If the lights are on red, can we go? No. If the lights are on red, we must wait. What lights must we wait for before we can walk across the road with traffic lights? No, red means we can't go. Green. green, yes. Always wait for green on the traffic lights, guys. Red means danger. It means there could be cars coming. But if the lights are on green, you can go. And you see here, people are cross the road. Yes, sometimes where we want to get to isn't on the right side of the road. We need to cross the road. Does anybody know what this is? Roundabout. Yes, you can see there are roads leading in all directions. And in the middle is a circle. We say this is round. So that's why we call roundabout. Yes. Now, a good phrase to use when giving directions, it's near to. Yes, what it's near to means is it's not far away from. So if we want to tell somebody where to go and we know one place, like we could, for example, say it's near to school, school. Factory. factory, airport, airport. Hotel. hotel, museum, museum. hospital, or car park. Yes, if we know one place and the place where the person wants to get to is near to there, we use the phrase, it's near to. But if the place is right next to, we can say, it's next to. Yes, when two places are next to one another. For example, here, the police station, the police station is, next is next to the hospital. The hospital. So you can see the police station here and the hospital here, next to. Or, if they're on the opposite sides of the road, we can say, it's opposite. It's opposite. The toy shop is opposite the coffee shop. Yes. The toy shop, the toy shop is here and the coffee shop is here. They're on different sides of the road, but they're facing each other. So we can say opposite. Yes. When things are across from each other, we use the word opposite. Or it's on the corner. Yes, some buildings are on the corners of the streets. Like you can see here, we've got one street going this way and the next street going this way. And this building represents the corner. 
Yes, so we can say it's on the corner. Or how about here we have a rabbit to represent the place. We have a blue box and a red box. But where is the rabbit? In between, yes, well done. Sometimes we can use the phrase, it's between. Yes, like we could say here, the rabbit is between the blue box and the red box. Yes, and when we talk about buildings or places, we can use this phrase too. Or, it's behind. Like here, the rabbit is behind the red box. Yes, and we can use this vocabulary with places too. Or, in front of. Now, the rabbit is in front of the red box. Yes, and these are all phrases we can use when giving directions. Now, here we have a map. The red X marks the spot where we are. Say, for example, we wanted to get to the police station. How would you tell me to get to the police station? What's the first thing we must go straight? Okay, so I'm going straight. I'm going straight. Now what must I do? I'm here. Turn left. Excellent. So you can see... Go straight, turn left. But now if I'm here and I want to get to the, I want to go to the cafe here, what must I do first? Go straight, turn right, go straight, turn left, excellent. Not yet. Go straight again. Excellent, guys. So you see, by using the directions vocabulary, we can get to the right places. Let's do one more. Who can pick a place on the map? Hospital. Okay, the hospital is here. How do we get? How does Lackau get to the hospital? Go straight. Go straight. Go straight. Turn left, turn right, and that's how we get to the hospital. And we could say the hospital is next to the police station. Well, how about the cinema? The hospital isn't next to the cinema, it's opposite the cinema, you see? Because they're on separate sides, the hospital and the cinema are opposite. But the hospital isn't far from the theatre. So what could we say about the hospital? It's near to, excellent. Next to the police station, opposite the cinema, or near the theatre. And these are all vocabulary phrases we can use when giving directions. Any questions, guys? Okay, well done. <laughs> Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation so that they can begin to understand the types of phrases we can use when giving directions. And also important, if we want to know directions ourselves, the questions we need to ask. How do I get to the... Or, where is the nearest? And the nearest is particularly important for emergencies. For example, hospital, we would ask, where is the nearest hospital? And soon we've got a worksheet activity for our students to practice further. But now, guys, time for our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And for this activity, I think we'll have a game of Teacher Says. So listen carefully. Teacher says, 
Put your hands on your head. Teacher says, touch your knees. Touch your shoulders. Teacher says, stand up straight. Teacher says, arms in the air. Arms down. Teacher says, arms down. Teacher says, turn around. Turn back the other way. <laughs> Teacher says, back the other way. Teacher says, arms up. Teacher says, one arm down. Teacher says, swap. 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 Teacher says, arms down. Teacher says, stand on one leg. Stands on both legs. Teacher says, swap legs. Teacher says, stand up straight. And then teacher says, down into a little ball. Five, four, three, two, one. Teacher says, jump. Excellent, guys. And teacher says, please sit down. And what we've got now is a board demonstration for our students to understand some of the places in relation to each other on a map in preparation for the map and worksheet activity. So first of all, I will draw a map on the board. A basic map that we will see in many city centers. Okay, so now we need some places. Who can give me some places for our map? Zoo. Zoo. Okay, very good, Dan. So we can have zoo, hospital. How do we spell hospital? H O S P I T A L. Okay, well, first of all, we have zoo, hospital. Now, if I ask, is the zoo next to the hospital true or false not true remember false the zoo is opposite the hospital is the zoo opposite the hospital yes that's true but if i say is the zoo next to the hospital no that's false and now, one more place, guys. School. Okay, and one more place. Cinema. C I N E M A. Okay, so now if I ask the question, is the school next to the cinema what will we say is the school next to the cinema yes it's true is the school next to the hospital no that's false is the school opposite the hospital remembering about opposite is the school opposite the hospital yes you can see across the row from is opposite but if they're on the same side we can say next to so one more time is the zoo next to the hospital no that's false but is the zoo opposite the hospital yes that's true. You can see they are opposite each other. But how about the school and the cinema? Is the school next to the cinema? Yes, yes. yes that's true. Is the school opposite the hospital? Yes. yes, that's true. Is the school next to the zoo? No, no that's false. Is the school 
near the zoo. Yes, that's true. So remember, we need to look at the location of each of the places before we can decide where they are. Opposite, opposite, next to, and near to. So these are the phrases we will use when giving directions. So well done, guys. That was great. And now it's time for our worksheet part of the lesson. So teachers, what you'll need to do is give a worksheet to each of the students in your class. And what our students need to do is they need to read the sentences and decide if the sentences are correct. If what the sentences say are true, we write true. But then, if the sentences aren't correct and the locations are different on the map, we write false. And the vocabulary is given for our students at the top. And then, for the sentences that are false, we can write the correct sentences in the spaces provided. And the final activity is our students must read the questions and then write the true directions based on the locations in the map. But what's the first thing to do, guys? Write our names on top. So, Chu, this one's for you. you. You're welcome. Pat, for you. you. You're welcome. Nadia, for you. you. You're welcome. You. Ned, you. you're welcome. Down, for you. you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Rich. Prel, you're welcome. Thank you, Pat Boom, you're welcome. And Lakau, for you. So, give our students around 12 minutes for this activity and just monitor the class, help them with anything they need. So guys, read the sentences and decide if they're correct. Like number one, the bakery is opposite the bus station. So down, where's the bakery? Okay. Bakery? Where's the bus station? Bus station. Are they opposite? No. So we say false. If it's not true, we say false. If it's true, we write true. So let's see. So the bakery is here. The bus station, is that true? No, it's false. So we write false after number one. So make sure you read your maps and then decide true or false. The bakery, okay, what number? The fire station. Number oh, don't worry about that yet. Let's do number two. So the fire station. Where's the fire station, Cleo? Find me the fire station. station. Is next, next to the post office. Post office. Where's the post office? Yeah. Is that true? Fire station, post yeah. office, false. Because there's a building in between. Next to means right next door. So if the map isn't true, we write false. But if the directions are true, we write true. The Bank of England is beside the school. False. Where is the school? Elementary school there. So Bank of England and school here, they're not beside. Okay. False again. Yeah. Okay, Pak Boom, what do you need? The fire station is next to the office. Okay, so where's the fire station? Where's the post office? Not next to, they're near to. Next to would be here. So, false. That's it. This is good practice for our students reading their maps and deciding if the correct vocabulary is true or false. The, ho the hospital. The hospital. 
Here's Pine Road. So what does the sentence say? The hospital is in Pine Road. Pine Road, hospital, true. That one is true. The hairdressers. Let's see, can we find hairdresser? Hairdresser here. So is it is that true or false, Sam? So here's the hairdresser. Where's the hotel? Where is the hotel? Here. Hairdresser and hotel. No. Are they are they next to? False. A L S Okay, so the Bank of England is beside the school. False. Yes. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the worksheet activity where they had to read the various sentences and judging by the locations on the map, decided they were true or false. And then for the true statements, write them correctly in the spaces provided. My students here all did a brilliant job. So well done guys, that was great. <laughs> and that's all we've got time for today. So we hope you've enjoyed the lesson. And the next time you're looking for directions, you know how to ask. And also, if somebody asks you, you know how to respond with the correct vocabulary. And we'll see you again soon for the next lesson. So can we turn to wave and say goodbye, guys? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you again soon.